Welcome to another in our series of InterGraph CAD Works and Analysis Solutions videos featuring Caesar 2. We mentioned severely cyclic conditions in B31.3. This is something that a few people have a difficult time with because the code talks about other conditions with an equivalent effect. And that's what I'd like to describe quickly in detail here. The B31.3 definition of severely cyclic conditions lets us know when it would be a good time to pay closer attention to stresses and fatigue design. Essentially, the code is providing a combination of conditions that are considered severe. At 7,000 cycles, the safety factor, or the separation between design and mean failure, is about 2 on stress, which is also a shift from the failure mean by about 3 standard deviations. At this point, the code tells us that when the calculated stress is greater than 80% of the allowable, it's close enough to the two-time safety factor that extra precautions regarding fabrication, material, welding, etc. should be made. This also tells us how careful we need to be with our calculation and with inaccurate SIFs and Ks. Recent data in the lower cycle ranges tells us when we are within 80% of a two-time safety factor based on mean failure stress in the lower cycle ranges. We'll see that in the low cycle ranges we've got a lot of room for error. In the high cycle range that we have very little room for error. Markle curve derivations are known not to be conservative in the high cycle ranges and we want to quantify where those ranges exist. This is the chart we want to use. The left vertical axis of this plot tells us what percentage of the B31 allowable stress produces an equivalent severely cyclic condition for the given number of cycles along the horizontal axis of the plot. The two lines here tell us what percentage of the allowable is considered severely cyclic for any given number of cycles using best estimates of mean failure. The blue line uses Markle's equation for mean failure and the red line uses the PVP 2008-61871 equation for piping mean failure. We can see that the two lines cross at 20,000 cycles, and that above 20,000 cycles, we should be more careful. The red line is the best estimate we have for knowing when we have a severely cyclic piping system and when we should pay more attention to our calculated stress. We can also note that the PVP 2008-61871 equation gives a percentage allowable equal to a 0.8 at around 7,000 cycles, and this is what the code intends. So let's use this red curve to interpret the point at 10,000 cycles. So at 10,000 cycles, when the calculated stress is about 72% of the B31 allowable, the real stress is at about 80% of half the stress to cause mean failure, and that's considered a severely cyclic condition. Let's look at it more simply. At 100,000 cycles, so at 100,000 cycles, when the stress is 54% of the B31-3 allowable, you are in an equivalent severely cyclic condition. This slide 13 gives the equations and notes for developing the previous curves if you'd like to use them. These are the same curves with the artificial low end limits on the F cyclic reduction factor removed. These curves show that at low cycles we have a lot more safety separating us from the real mean failure line. This emphasizes that we have a lot more safety at low cycles than at high cycles when using the B31 code allowables. This can lead us to a degree of overconfidence when we're designing in cycle ranges greater than around 3,000 when the limit on F is 1.2 and greater than around 7,000 cycles when the limit on F is, is 1. We can also see here that we have less safety at very high cycles where less safety can be seen as the difference between the red and the blue lines in the above charts and we can see that the separation continues to increase above 100,000 cycles and that we generally want to be very careful if we're dealing with B31-3 type stresses in these cycle ranges. So let's see how this works in a piping system between two skids in a gas processing facility, for example. So let's look at this system. This system was originally run and showed no overstresses. This is a gas line that's at 145 degrees Fahrenheit and 800 PSIG. It runs between two skids in a gas plant. The boundary condition at the skids were fixed and given to us, which is common. 
The small two inch extra strong branches at nodes 120 and 20 were not included in the original model because they're so small. The thought was that the two inch branches aren't going to affect a 30 inch line that's hardly moving. And this is a relatively common assumption. The original runs showed that the system was not overstressed. When we look at the SIF reports, there are no SIFs for the points of interest, 20 and 120. The user ignored the small branch connections, thinking that they would be reasonably field routed or that the draftsman had laid out the small line with adequate flexibility since the temperature was only 145F and the line was so short. The client, though, didn't like this explanation since it was a hydrocarbon line and he requested that the small 2-inch branches should be included in the analysis. The designer decided to include the 2-inch pipe with the 30-inch pipe run. This was at the end of the job, so all the, the routing and the equipment was set. So this was just considered finalizing paperwork. How could a 2-inch branch pipe affect a 30-inch line that's not moving? But we remember from the last webinar that WRC 329 on page 22 said that for this D over D ratio, the very small D over D ratio, the code requirements are obviously silly. So let's go see quickly what this means. And so we want to run the PRG IK spreadsheet on our 30 by 2 inch branch connection. The PRG IK spreadsheet is found on the bottom of the FEA tools menu. The spreadsheet is quite large, so on a smaller screen you may have to make it smaller. So we'll enter the 30 by 0 0.5 inch run pipe we're analyzing. The branch which is going to give us a potentially, obviously, silly result is 2.375 by 0 0.218. That's the extra strong branch pipe. So we enter the data we're interested in and click on the Calculate Update I and K spreadsheet button. Calculations are made for STLLC 0702. B313. These are the two main spreadsheet entities that we compare. Here's the nuclear code. Here's the Norsky Veritas. Here's WACE and EPRI 110996 and 110755. And here's the Widera data. So as we expect when we compare the unreinforced fabricated T for loads through the branch our values when we use the existing B313 code are going to be about two times too high. But for the run, values are going to be about eight times too high for out of plane and about six times too high for in plane. When we compare that result to the nuclear code, we see that the nuclear code agrees. So what we're finding is that indeed as WRC 329 stated on page 22. This is an obviously silly result and so when we ask the pipe stress analysis to include those two inch branches we're going to get extremely over conservative I factors for loads through the run pipe. Thank you for sharing your time with us. For Caesar 2 news, success stories, and free webinars please google Caesar Insider blog.